don't forget to click that subscribe and bell icon to receive a notification each time I upload a new video. Hi everyone, it's Mike here and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today it's time for June's mid-month mini mission inspiration art tag. So I'll turn over to my other camera, show you the prompt for June and then show you what I'm going to create in my art tag journal for the month. So as I was saying, the prompt card or the prompt for June is heart. So what I've done is I've gone through my collection of um, stamps. I thought I'd do some stamping this month and I've pulled out um, one of my um, journal phrases stamps that I did for Indigo Blue and one of the phrases is follow your heart. So I'm going to use that, follow your heart, um, on the tag. And my main focal point is also going to be an indigo blue stamp, which is this splattered heart designed by Limo Webber. Now, this is a fairly old one now. This is going back a couple of years, um, probably about 2018, possibly. Um, I think it's still available on the Indigo Blue website, um, as are these. I don't have any stock of these at the moment, but Indigo Blue still have some in stock because I checked. Um, so, yeah, so I'm going to use the Follow Your Heart. Now, obviously, I've got my tag journal. Now, normally, I would do it on a craft tag, which has been cut out from um, some biscuits that Mr. Bentley eats. Um, but this month, I'm going to do it on some white watercolour cardstock, mainly because I just want a brighter, kind of um, more vibrant colour. So, and the colours that I'm going to use for this one. Um, for the background, anyway, are Dina Wakeley's. So we've got Dina Wakeley Media Turquoise, I've got Dina Wakeley Media Lime, and I've got Dina Wakeley Media Tangerine. And just as a highlight, I'm going to use Ruby, which is going to be for the heart. So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a painted kind of background, a scrabbly kind of background. Um, which I need to get rid of that cutting mat because I'm not actually going to do any cutting. So I'll put that down on the floor. Just move my light a little bit. There seems to be a shadow there. Oh, it's, it's my water pot. That's what's causing the shadow. We don't want that, do we? Okay, so what I'm going to do, first of all, start off with the turquoise. We'll put a little bit on the mat. In fact, I'm going to take all of the colours and put, hopefully there's still some left, there we go. And then the tangerine. It's a bit thicker. Right. And then I've got my brush. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick up some of the paint and then I'm just going to start layering the colour all over. Now because I've not gessoed the paper it's going to um, it's going to soak in quite quickly so I'll need to keep adding a bit more and this is going to be one of those instances where it's just going to be a case of I'm going to keep on going until I get the feeling that I ought to stop. <laughs> I love this colour, absolutely love it. Okay, and it's a warm day again today, so I've got the window open, so if you hear dog barking, that's Hugo from next door. He's a little wire-haired terrier. Likes the sound of his own voice, does our Hugo. Lovely little creature though, but obviously not as nice as Mr. Bentley. And you can see I didn't dry the paint between applications because I'm not using gesso. It is just soaking straight in. Okay. Let's 
quickly wash that. It doesn't take too long because I'm not waiting for it to dry and then we'll get the orange. And I'm liking the fact you can see brush strokes, which is absolute fine. Right, we we'll just need to tad more. I think very, very soon I may have to replenish a lot of these Dina Wakely paints. So I've had them for quite some time so they are starting to dry up just a little maybe just there as well just a hint just a hint okay so that's going to be okay for the first layer so I will dry that off get this cleaned up and then I will be right back. Okay, so just move that light to one side a little bit. So that's now dry. Now, as with some acrylic paint, there is a little bit of shine sometimes in them. Um, not all acrylic paints have got shine when they're dry. I think it depends on the type of binders that the manufacturers use. That's okay, don't mind it too much. Now, what I want to do is I want to introduce some white into this. I've got, still got some white at the bottom here, and still got some white at the bottom, at the top there. And there's a little bit kind of just scraped all the way through. So what I want to do is just take some more white paint. Now, I'm not sure how much of this is left in my Dina Wakely bottle. And then I'm going to get a spatula, just a small spatula. And I'm just going to grab a little bit of that white paint on there and I'm just going to kind of drag it over the surface just to kind of bring that background back into the foreground. And just a little bit too much there maybe. and it kind of grunges it up a little bit without being overly grungy because you've used white rather than black or brown but you still kind of get a grungy effect even though you've got bright colours yeah I like that That'll do. Okay, so I'll get this lot cleaned off again. Okay, that can go back. <laughs> I'll get that dry, get this cleaned up, and then I'll be right back. Okay, so before we go any further, uh, this is a bit whippy. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to stick this to the front of that. Now it's a little bit bigger so I will have to do a little bit of trimming down but that's okay I don't mind that. Um, so I'm just going to grab some glue. So before we go any further this is probably the best time to do it before we start layering on anything else. And if you're wondering, the B stands for back. <laughs> I know the front is exactly the same as the back before I started, but <clears throat> there's a different texture onto this watercolour cardstock that I'm using. And I prefer one side over the other, which is why I wrote on it. So there is method in my madness. I'm not completely bonkers. Okay, so I'll let that dry 
let that grab. I'll trim off the excess from the edge there and down that side there. And then we'll be back to carry on with a more sturdy tag. Okay, we're back. So as you can see, trimmed off, trimmed off, trimmed off, nice and tidy on the back. So I do want to cover the back as well. And I've just got some um, patterned paper, which I just thought I would use for that. So that's just gonna be a quick trace and cut. So I'll just draw around that, draw around that and just draw across there. So I can now cut that out and then glue that to the back, which I will do now, and then get it out of the way. Okay, all done. That's all done. So I can <coughs> distress the back, that's not a problem, later. But there's the front of my tag now ready to accept a little bit of stamping. So what I want to do is I just want to create a little bit of darker kind of texture in the background. So I have <coughs> somewhere text stamp, an old text stamp. There it is. So this is just a um, an illegible text stamp, if you know what I mean. Um, and all I want to do is I just want to introduce, there we go, there's the vintage photo, just a little bit of stamping just into the background just a tiny amount 
and I'm only going to go really lightly. I'm hardly touching because I will be adding another stamp on top of that. So it's just adding a little bit of texture in the background. Now that was the um, illegible text, but what I also want is some circles, some kind of circles in this. So I know I've got my Halloween stamps out um, because on this one there's like a really scrabbly circle. So this set is called Skullduggery Borders, again from Indigo Blue. So let's pull that set out. It doesn't look like I've used that one before. I've used that one and I've used that one loads of times. Okay, so on this one, again, we just need a little stamp block. And I'm going to use a different kind of colour this time. I'm going to use Crackling Campfire, only because it's got a little bit of red in it. And that will help to pull the colours later. So I'm just going to just add a couple of those, just round about. And a lot of these probably will be hidden when the final image does go down. But don't mind that. Don't mind that at all. It's only just adding like surface texture. The surface texture into the background, if you know what I mean. Right, because they're water-based, I'll just need to quickly give those a blast and then we're ready to add the final coat. Or the final image anyway. Okay, so that's now all dry. So now I'm going to stamp this image onto there. Now that doesn't look very big on there, it's only because it's not shown at full 100%. It is actually a lot bigger when you look at the stamp. A lot, lot bigger. <laughs> Huge in fact. So what I've done is I've already positioned it on my stamp platform exactly where I want it to go. So I'm going to just put that down on there. I don't know whether or not these magnets will hold that in place because this is actually quite thick now but because I've got it up to the edge it doesn't really matter so first things first what I'm going to do is I'm just going to very very lightly just ink up the stamp with some stays on jet black but I'm not going to go really really heavy And I'm only doing just that little, that little area there. And then I'm going to stamp that just down. That's it. And then I'm going to take it back out again. Now the beauty of this is, of course, is that I can reposition this later. So what I want to do is just bring that, put that to one side and then come back in with that ruby paint. Okay, so let's get some of that ruby paint down. And then I want a small paintbrush. And I'll just use um, one of my detail brushes. Da, 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 da. Ow. I want one with a huge bristle. That'll do. Since we're using Dina Wakely, I may as well use a Dina Wakely brush. So I'll take some of that ruby paint and I'm going to just quickly go around that area. Where I know the heart is going to stamp. Now if you really, really want these paints to go opaque, because sometimes 
the paints from like Dina Wakely or Tim or whatever are not 100% opaque, they're kind of translucent. You can always add some white gesso to those paints just to kind of make them a little bit more opaque. You might just need to experiment just a tad with where or how much you need to add. But what a better way to spend an afternoon than experimenting with paint. Okay, so that's the first coat. So I'm gonna get that dried off. Okay, so that's the first coat dry. So now I'm just gonna go back in and just add another coat over the top. I think actually it's still warm because this is drying really really quickly <laughs> but that's fine don't mind that don't mind that at all there we go so I'll get this dry sorry I'll get this dry get this cleaned up and then we'll be, and then we'll be back okay so the red paint is dry I've remounted it back onto my stamp platform. So now it's time to add some more ink to that stamp. And this time really make sure I've got the entire of the pattern. Try not to catch the edges. And then we'll do our first impression. Obviously I do need to add a little bit of pressure onto this and I may have to do two or three impressions before it gets to be exactly how I want it. But let's get in there. So maybe a little bit more. this way this time and down and then maybe put a little bit of pressure on that and let's see what we've got we're getting there we are definitely, definitely getting there. Like in this. So I think one more. And I think we're golden. If you pardon the expression. Don't often catch me using modern vernacular. Me likey, me likey lots. Right, so before I put that away, I'll just drop that down on there. And that way I can just pick up any excess paint, or paint, Ooh. ink. Just on that piece of kitchen roll. And then I can clean that up at my leisure. Later on, laters. I missed one. Here we go. Right. 
There we go, like that, like the look. So I just want to get a white jelly roll pen. And then let's just add, maybe just a couple of little highlights just on there like that, that'll do. Right, so for the next bit, I just want that stamp from my stamp set, follow your heart, and I want some scrap paper, so that will be some scrap card, like so. Now then, what happened to that? There it is. So we'll drop that on there. Now with this set, you get like a, a Scrabble border and it does fit inside. If you're using your stamp press, that's fine because you can position one, position that first and position your stamp over the top and then stamp inside it. The reason there's holes in it there is because you can just use, if you want to cut the stamp, you can make them bigger and smaller by just inking up where you want it to be. I know. So we're going to use just that folio hat as it is. We'll use the same ink, if I can remember where I put it, there you go. And then I'll just drop that down like so. Doesn't particularly matter whether it's straight or not because I can always cut the card. There you go. Should have used the stamp press. But hey ho. It's hand done, and we don't really care. There we go. Cut that out. And if I'm really careful, I can cut that little bleg off. There we go. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut that side in an arrow like that on this side I'm going to cut with the tail so it looks like it's pointing in a direction and then we'll get up some glue so this is the indigo blue grab and go which is marvellous stuff. It's really quick grab, it dries clear. So I'll just put just a little bit on there like that. Just wipe that off. There we go. And then turn that over. And I'm going to add that. So about there. So I'll let that dry for a second or two. In the meantime, I'm going to stick this onto the back of the tag, just so that I know what that was. Or should I trim that down a little bit? Just make it a bit smaller. Let's do it before the glue grabs completely. Let's just do that. So it's not quite so pointy. There you go. <laughs> okay, let's put some glue on the back of that. As soon as I've got the grab and glue, I might as well use that. Now then, which way around do my labels go? Let's have a look at the last one. So last month was the haiku. Okay, so if the tag is that way, then like so. So fold over to, yeah, so fold over that way. 
<coughs> so if it goes that way, it's readable on that side. There. So just drop that down in the middle. And then what I'll do is just grab a quick pen and I will just look I've got glue on that now. Perhaps I should have waited for it to dry. Just makes it pop a little. I'll probably come back and add a little bit more once that has actually dried. But there you go. So that is going to be my art tag for June's mid-month mini mission inspiration. And as soon as I can find my punch, I'll pop a hole in the top and add it to my journal. Um, which you'll probably see in the photos at the end. So I hope you've enjoyed watching me create that art tag for June. If you have, please remember to give the video a thumbs up, share the video with your friends, and if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video. Don't forget, if you'd like to join us over on our Mission Inspiration Facebook group, um, that is the URL on screen now, but there will be a clickable link in the description area below. That's all from me for now. I'll see you all again very, very soon. Bye for now. I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels because without you, these videos would not be possible. Thank you.